everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast. Well, it has been an exciting month if you're an Apple fan. Apple released iOS 7, which took the world by storm. And recently with 7.0.3 for iOS 7, we now have big updates to the iWorks applications and to other native apps that are part of the iLife suite, namely iPhoto and iMovie. The app I want to focus on for this episode is iMovie because it is one of the most beautiful applications I think I've ever seen and the by far the best iteration of iMovie for iOS so far. So let's take a look. What you're looking at here is the basic interface and you can see that Apple is carrying through the same theme for iOS 7 with the minimalist design. Much better here because of the charcoal gray background and the black banners along the top and bottom which add a strong degree of clarity to the links. But overall I like the minimalist framework and this is a big plus I think for the overall user experience. So let's go ahead and start a new project. I'm going to hit the plus symbol at the bottom right and you see here I have the option to start a new movie or a new trailer. For the purposes of this episode I'm going to create a movie for you but I'm going to show you the trailer option first. And you see here, you still have all the different options to choose from, but this time the interface is very clean. I love it. It's absolutely elegant as far as I'm concerned. And you can still go through and select all of the different templates that are available and you can still play them as a preview beforehand before you decide to go into creating a project. But if you're not familiar, when you get into the trailer mode, you have two options. You have an outline mode where you can type in your outline for how you want your trailer to be set up and then you go into the storyboard mode which gives you suggestions for close-ups group shots and so forth and iMovie just pieces it all together and makes this wonderful professional trailer now let's take a look at iMovie and I have to tell you I am so excited about the new features so we're going to click the plus symbol once again I'm going to go to iMovie and you see here you have the same clean interface with the same options for themes. And the themes are still the same as they were. No new themes were added to iMovie, at least not yet. But you get to see the themes ahead of time, whereas before you chose the themes after you went into your project. So now you at least know how your titles are going to be set up in your project, depending on what theme you choose. So I'm going to choose a theme and then create a movie. And look at the new interface. Very clean and elegant. One thing I like about minimalist frameworks is that the color is minimal. So here we have black, dark charcoal gray, and then we have a lighter gray. And then we have an even lighter gray that's close to white. And white is where you have the active links. In this case, the name of the project is white. So I like the contrast, the use of the grays, perfect use of the minimalist design, and by far Apple's best solution to using this new minimalist framework, at least in my opinion. It looks very nice and very elegant. And you know Apple always puts a lot of thought into how they design their products, and especially with iMovie, because they want you to be able to have a consistent experience no matter how you're using it. So for example, if I was to rotate this horizontally, you'll see that automatically the design is formatted for a horizontal framework, still maintaining the same elegance, carrying through the simple outlines for the contours, uh, very little detail, in some cases just simple shapes in the case of the play button, but even in horizontal mode, really quite elegant. So to or import content into your project, you just hit that music icon that's in the center to the left. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a little demo project here. I have some videos set up. I'm going to go ahead and just drop this one right into my timeline. This is a video of myself that I created as a kind of an intro to a podcast. And I'll just play it so you can just see what it looks like. And again, look how clean the design is. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love this application so much, I think I'm just going to use it just for the fun of it because I just love looking at it. It's beautiful. And there are some pretty nice features, but let me go ahead and just show you the, the features that have been carried over from previous versions. 
Now, if you're familiar with iMovie before, then this is nothing new, but in case you're using iMovie for the first time, before you had to double tap on the video clip in your timeline to get a menu to appear. Here you just tap once and the menu appears along the bottom. And you actually have two options now. You have video and or audio. So with video selected, I now have the option to add a title. And then another menu appears. And you have the same options, opening, middle, closing. You can also control the speed as well. So you can make it twice as fast or twice as slow. And this is a new feature. I love this option. So this is consistent with the feature that comes built in with the latest iPhone, iPhone 5S, for example. Now you'll see there are two dots along the bottom as well. You select those and you can also create a split. Before you had to understand the gestures that were built into iMovie to handle these features and now they just show up as a menu of options so you don't have to do the gestures if you don't want. For example, before with the video clip selected, wherever the marker is, you just swipe down with your finger and you split. Now, one thing I'm gonna use that I really like is this undo button that's on the right in the middle. Very convenient. So every anytime you do something you don't like, it, just hit the undo button. But with the clip selected, you don't have to just use your finger to swipe down to split it. You can actually just select split from the menu and do it that way. So it's nice having the menu option down below. It just makes the, the ease of use so much better. And you can also create a freeze frame from the menu, which is a nice option to have. Before you created a freeze frame, you swiped upward rather than downward. And you can still do that. Now let's go ahead and select the video clip again. Let's go through more options. You see I can also duplicate as well. Now let's go to audio. So now we can control audio from a menu down below without having to double tap on it. Hit the dots. And you can also detach audio from the menu below. And this is a nice feature to have because before you couldn't control the audio as much, whereas now you can. You can now go in with the audio track separate. You can now go in and add some adjustments to that audio. I can change the speed of the audio separately from the video track. I can add fade to the audio. So if I wanted to add a fade to the end of this track, for example. Just click fade, and you see there's a little arrow that appears. I can drag that arrow to determine how much of a fade I want. You can see how it, get, see how it gets discolored toward the end. That determines how much of a fade you're gonna get. And I even like how they even designed this. I mean, the, the simplicity of it. It's no gradations, it's just two different tones to distinguish the length of the fade. And it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful to look at. I mean, Apple just hit a home run with this design. It's amazing. Okay, I'm now going to move on to another feature that I really like. It's brand new for iOS. It's, it was made for the desktop. It is the picture-in-picture -picture effect or overlay effect. And this is new for iOS, and, and it's wonderful the way it works. Let me show you. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the media icon, and I'm going to bring in another video. And you see I have several options here. I can just drop the whole video into my project, but then that will go alongside the existing one. I can play it or I can choose to hit the dots and it gives me an option to create these various different overlays. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the picture in picture option. So that drops it into my timeline. It's gonna go in right where your marker is, but I want to go a little further. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab it and just push it over to the beginning of my track. And you can now see that there's a little square on top of my existing video. I wanna move that around. So I'm gonna tap it with my finger and I'm going to use the move tool that's in the bottom right of the viewfinder. And that's going to enable me to not only move it where I want it to go, but it'll also enable me to pinch and zoom to resize. And again, what's nice about iMovie, and this is what Apple does for all of its applications, it makes sure that the user interface is consistent throughout. So if you want to rotate horizontally, for example, here you see I have a nice view of my layout horizontally. It's just wonderful, beautifully designed. Uh, sometimes I could just stare at it without even working it. So incredibly nice the way it's designed. So let's go back to the vertical mode here for a second. And now you see I have a little video set up to the right of me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the move tool again. I'm gonna try and maybe enlarge it just a little bit to increase the size. 
Okay, that'll work. And now I have this video that's playing alongside my existing video. So I'll just go ahead and play it so you can just see visually what that looks like. I basically set up a slideshow of screenshots of iMovie, which is now playing alongside the other video. This is a really nice feature, but it doesn't stop there. With that video track selected, you notice that I get a menu along the bottom, very consistent with the other feature. I can switch back and forth. I don't have to use the video and video option. I can choose to just overlay that video right on top of the existing one, or I can choose a side-by-side -side option. Let me go ahead and play that back so you can see what that looks like. So here's a nice cool side-by-side -side option. Very nice. Now, with the track selected, once again, I can tap on that side-by-side -side icon, icon at the bottom. And you see that I have other options here. I can swap them from left to right, from right to left. Tap it again. And I can make them from top to bottom as well. So you have several options. And, and I like the fact that Apple has thought about giving the user more options with iMovie for iOS because before I really felt that iMovie was just a little too limited and now we have a lot more to work with. Now let me go ahead and export this project and then I'm gonna go ahead and play it back for you. So I just hit the arrow on the top left and it took me back to this screen here. Now I have the option to share. I can share it to different social media sites or I can just save it to my library, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to choose a, I don't know, large, maybe I'll just go with HD since it's not really that long. I'm going to choose a 720p video and you see how fast this works. So I now have that in my camera roll and give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and add this video to my project and play it back for you. Hi everyone. Welcome to my Apple podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. And that is iMovie. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of My Apple Podcast. My name is Tim Brown. I don't have a featured artwork this week, but I promise to bring you one next time. If you haven't tried out iMovie, I encourage you to check it out. It is a fantastic application. I hope to cover all of the other updates as well, including reviews of iPhoto and GarageBand, as well as all of the applications that come with iWork. Until next time, see you later.